Featuring Professor Ken and Rick in The Lion's Den. Okay, it's been some time, and you know who it is. It's Professor Ken, and you know me, Reek, in the lion's den. What's going on with you, Ken? Hey, man, everything is everything, baby. You know, I'm just sitting here, man, you know, trying to think of my next big investment. Most definitely. You got so many out there already. I think that's exactly what Dr. Clark Anderson was talking about, about we need to own our own businesses, and we need to control our own destiny. You know, one thing that Tyler Perry has did is equivalent to what uh, Barack Obama did. You know what I'm saying? In life, you either first or you first. You know what I'm saying? And he's the first and he's first to do it. So that being said, you know, it's going to inspire young African-Americans, you know, throughout the diaspora to want to be businessmen also, you know, because, you know, like he said, you got to think big, dream big. You know, when you think big and dream big, you know, whatever you see, whatever you see, you can be. You know, if you believe it and conceive it, you can achieve it. And I think that that is the uh, message that I get from Tyler Perry owning his own business. You know, I mean, you know, we, we, we had several periods, you know, in particular for African-Americans where we had prospered. You know, I mean, everybody know about talk, uh, uh, Tulsa, Black Wall Street. You know, we know about during, during uh North Carolina, you know, they had their own bus company and, you know, uh, Arvin Avenue in Atlanta, you know, Millionaire Row. You know, there's been many instances in our history, you know, Madam C.J. Walker, where we as a people uh, rise to prominence. You know, Jay-Z being the first pop billionaire, you know, uh, well, I don't know if he's the first, it's a, a toss-up between him. Dr. Dre, if you want to take away the taxes, you know, if you deduct Dr. Dre taxes, he ended up being 800,000, 800 million strong. But, you know, you know, all those guys, irrespective to what their financial decimals are, you know, they all have been monumental in the uh, economic development of our community. And, you know, we should be millionaires. We need to tempt powerful nation in terms of, you know, gross national product and wealth the nations. You know what I'm saying? We have an income wealth that makes us 10th in the world. You know, that's billions and trillions of dollars that's being spent in the African-American community on a daily basis. And that money needs to matriculate or it needs to work its way back to the African-American community. And I think Tyler Perry opening a studio in Atlanta, of all places, the home of Martin Luther King, the home of civil rights. You know, I think that it's monumental because now, you know, over four, five hundred to a thousand African-Americans would be higher. You know, we would start to see people behind the camera. You know, our uh, story be told, you know, from our perspective. And that's the that's that's the good thing about owning your own thing. You know, like I own my own publishing company. You know what I mean? I can put in my book and take out of my book what I want to put in my book and take out. But I can, I can release it whenever I get ready to release it. I don't have to report to no authorities. And I think that that's what Tyler Perry, you know, through his sojourn in Hollywood, you know, he said, you know, Hollywood ain't got nothing for me. Hollywood don't respect me. You know, how can you not respect a man who, you, who was 10 years ago was living out of his car, you know what I'm saying, maybe 20 years ago or whatever the time period was. Right. And, you know, he built an empire as big as his empire. He had 10, 10 sound stages in his studio named after Will Smith and Sissy Tyson, Oprah Winfrey, you know, uh, Halle Berry and all these great, uh, uh, Sidney Poitier, you know what I mean, all these great African-Americans, you know, who contribute a lot to uh, Hollywood, Samuel Jackson, you know, the list go on, and they're not being respected. They're not, there's no studio name after them. His studio is bigger than all of the studios in Hollywood combined and still leave them 60,000 acres left. You know, I mean, it's like, what he done is just, it's, and then, you know, the, the thing about it though, man, you know, you know, we, 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 we are people at one time was enslaved. Everybody know that black folks was enslaved. And the biggest uh, foe or enemy of black folks in the early uh, 1860 was the Confederates. Right. Well, the, the uh, studio that he owned was a formal Confederate plotting, where they used to plot how they're going to, you know, kill us and how they was going to plot how they're going to kill the Northerners, right. you know, the Southerners, you know. So it was like a, almost like a, a CIA, like it would be equivalent 
to what a CIA camp or a situation room in Washington would be. Right. You know, so a black man owning a formal Confederate army base is like, man, it's like just a testimony, you know, that what they talk about in the Bible said, Abraham, know for a surety that your people would be a stranger in a foreign land. They would suffer for 400 years, and after those 400 years, they would come out with great substance. This is the great substance that our forefathers were talking about that we were going to come out of. You know what I mean? You look at uh, African-American literacy rate, you know what I mean? We was not able to read for 250 years, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, in 1865, you know, you, you're, you're allowed to read, and within, you know, uh, 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 approximately a year, 150 years, we have redu reduced our literacy rate to 50%. You know what I'm saying? Me, uh, you know, it's probably 50% of us is not functionally literate, but the rest of the rest of us are co college educated, you know, technical college educated, university educated, you know, self educated. We can read and write, we can run our own businesses and so on and so forth, you know, and you know, that's just man, that's just great. And, and, and Tyler Perry, he's like the cream on top of that cake, you know what I'm saying? He's the cream that comes to the top, you know, and that brother, you know, he's he's he's, he's inspiring brothers, man. Jay Z was there, Puffy was there, Beyonce, all of the you know, the rich, so-called affluent African-Americans was there, Oprah Winfrey. So, you know, you got a chance to see uh, greatness at its best. You know, I always tell people, man, you know, in order to win, you know what I mean, you can't just be great. You know, you got to be the greatest. You know, that's what Muhammad Ali was. He was the greatest. And what made Muhammad Ali the greatest was he always was three seconds ahead of his opponent. You know, by the time you hit Muhammad Ali, he'd throw three more punches at you. You know what I'm saying? The same thing with Sitting Sugar Ray Linda. The same thing with Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? You know, you got to be three seconds ahead of your opponent. You know, uh, Michael Jordan, prime example. You know, he was three steps ahead of his opponent. You know, by the time you get up to Mike and by the time you're trying to get up there and try to block a shot, he had already slammed it in the thing because he was three seconds quicker than you. So it was Kobe, you know what I mean? So it was Dr. J, you know what I mean? You know, you look at uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm X, one of the greatest orators of all time, along with Martin Luther King, and we have many more, you know, he was always three seconds ahead of the people that was interviewing him. He would, they would always say, well, that leads me to my next question because Malcolm and, and, and Martin knew the, the question before they even came at him because it was three seconds ahead of the interviewer, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, these are people like Tyler Perry. He's three seconds ahead of Hollywood. You know, okay, Hollywood, you won't give me no job? You won't, you know, uh, 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 what's his name? Jay-Z, you know, three seconds ahead of the music industry. You know what I'm saying? And he bought his own uh, uh, streaming company title, you know, so 30% of it to Sprint. You know, brilliant. You know, brilliant businessman. You know, we just, you know, we, you know, intellectually, you know, we are a developed people. It's just that we've been suppressed for so many years that, you know, we don't have the technical and intellectual skills to do certain things. But most of the things you see brothers doing, like Tyler Perry, Jay-Z, and other brothers, they do it out of mother wit. You know, that's something that we got from Africa. That's that mother wit. That mother wit is that quick wit. That ability, you know, to be three seconds ahead of, you know, whoever doing whatever they doing. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, what, what, why we are so, you know, uh, successful. And that's why we overcome it. A lot of the things that were put upon us in terms of oppression and discrimination, Jim Crowism, and a lot of other things that, you know, kept the so-called Negro down in this country for years, you know. So, man, Tyler Perry, man, and man, to him, man, all congratulations, man. The brother is doing a beautiful job, man. I mean, it's going to hire a lot of African Americans. We're going to have a lot of, you know, I mean, he, the man have a replica of the White House. Of the White House, imagine the black man ain't even allowed in the White House. You know what I mean? At one time, now he have a replica, a full replica of the White House for his new upcoming show on BT called The Over, the, the Over Office. You know, whatever it's called. You know, uh, but you know that's that's just great, man. You know, and like I said, you know, we are three seconds ahead of our competition. But another thing we got to understand, we got to educate ourselves too because it's important. I was listening to Dr. Thomas so well. And he was explaining uh, 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 discrimination, uh, diversity don't mean discrimination. And basically what he was saying, he said that uh, that in Uwanda, you know, the people in Uwanda, they were able to uh, get the British and their oppressors and their colonial uh, masters out of their country. And it took all of the wealth of their country, you know, uh, you know, matter of fact, it was, excuse me, it was, it was the Indians and the Pakistanis. You know, they got them out of their country, you know, they, they, they rule them out, you know, they pushed them out. And they said within a couple of years, the economy failed because they didn't have the skills 
was in the know with all. You know, it's the old saying that you give a, a poor man a million dollars, he'll lose it within, you know, a couple of days because people who know how to get the money will get it back from them. Right. You know, so we got that's why we got to educate ourselves. You know, as Tyler Perry has done and others have done, Jay Z and and Puffy, we got to educate ourselves about business. We can't just say we're going to dream big. We have to be educated also. You know, you know, I mean, you know, another case, you know, uh, Dr. Sowell was talking about, he was talking about uh, when you look at the old uh, ancient, uh, if you look at the, back in the 30s and the 40s with the Italians, the Italians, you know, they ruled by, you know, bootlegging and, you know, they had mafia and everything, but there was the Irish that was the politicians that controlled their politics because the Irish came from a country, you know, where politics was practiced. You know, they didn't practice uh, politics in Italy. So, you know, that go to show you, he was just explaining that, you know, if you don't have the skill set and you don't have the knowledge and the wisdom of understanding, even though it might be your community, another outside force can control the community. You know, uh, guess who the most prosperous people in the world? Um... The Chinese, the Chinese have a billion people in China, but they have about 250,000 people dispersed national, internationally around the world. That 250,000 people it, it dispersed around the world is worth more than the whole billion people in China combined. You know what I'm saying? Because those people, you know, they learn, they, they have a skill set, they learn business, you know, they train themselves, you know, so they can be in a position where they can own stuff. You know, like I told you before, you know, if you go to Chinatown, in uh, L.A., you know what I'm saying, they got 33 China banks of China. You know, in America, you know what I'm saying, I mean, we might have two legitimate black banks, 20, you know, overall, but maybe two of them is legitimate that, you know, that, that, that can really operate as a major uh, banking system. So, you know, those are the things that we have to work on, you know, in connection with child, the parents. We have to work on skill set. We got to work on educating ourselves. We got to know more than our our opponent, we got to be three seconds ahead of the competition, and then we all can become Tyler Perry's. I believe that. Now, you know, in my town right now, we got the, the commander in chief, you know, the one that goes by uh, Donald Trump in the town. But I know you wanted to uh, expand on something that you know he had said earlier within the week. Yeah, all I'm gonna just say to uh, young African American men and older African American men and women is that we got to quit giving our votes to these candidates wholesale, meaning with no restrictions connected. You know what I mean? We should all have one vote. You know, we should vote in a block and we should all say, okay, if you don't do this, then we're not going to vote for you. You know what I mean? Because obviously our vote count. If it didn't count, then everybody would be courting our vote. You know, for example, Donald Trump was just in the, we're just in the uh, over office uh about a week or so ago, and he said to a group of young African-American leaders, they call itself the leadership movement or whatever, and he told them, he said, uh, he said, y'all built the country. You know, I mean, y'all built the country was an undertone uh, that your forefathers were slaves and that, you know, you the reason, they the reason why we, you know, so prosperous. You know, I mean, they're basically admitting to, you know, some of the wrongs that was uh, transpired back in that time, but no one wants to mention, okay, if we built the country, Mr. Trump, you know, at the same breath, you should have said, well, that's why we're going to give y'all reparations. That's why we're going to pay y'all for all of the work that your forefathers uh, uh, put in to make sure that we was able to live a Gentile lifestyle for 250 years, you know, and, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders and all of these politicians, you know, uh, I can't understand how Joe Biden uh, control at least 89% of the black vote when, you know, he ain't done nothing specific you know, to get that vote. You know, I, I, I'm i down with Joe Biden because, you know, he was down with Barack, but I'm just saying, you know, what is he going to do for us or what have you done for us lately? You know, what are some of the guarantees or the guarantors that you're going to give African Americans if we vote for you? You know, because that's why Donald Trump can say, like, he can talk to them like that. He can use racial undertones. He can, you know, slander them in their face. And everybody, you know, I mean, you should have seen it, man. When they was giving a man, I mean, I don't know where they picked them. Somebody found about three or 400 black folks that really support him. You know, they were roaring up in that damn White House of what he, what he uh, said something, you know. So we know that, you know, uh, we are still the blind, deaf, and dumb. You know what I mean? We are still, you know, in the 
condition that we are because of lack of self. You know, when, when people actually do their due diligence and they go and they study their history and they find out, you know, that this is not an accident nor a coincidence. It's a reason why we in the position that we in. Then I think a lot of African Americans will start thinking, you know, in a collective voice and they will be able to, you know, come together and put together a vote that would represent the totality of the people that would ultimately, you know, feed our uh, whatever desires we may have, you know, whether it's better schools or whether, you know, it's uh, more access to money or whatever it is that, you know, our political pundits in the African American community, our so-called leaders, you know, deem appropriate, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we have to do. We have to stop just, you know, throwing ourselves as prostitutes. We got to quit being good hoes. You know, even good hoes get paid, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, speaking of investment, man, you know, I want to first say shout out to that boy Tyler Perry, man. He has one of the biggest studios in the world. You know what I mean? It's bigger than all of the studios in Hollywood combined. And a lot of people don't understand. You know, I've, I lived in Atlanta for many years. A lot of the uh, entertainment business is moving to Atlanta. You know, they have some uh, tax incentives and tax breaks up there for the production companies. And it's uh, very attractive, and it's attracting a lot of, you know, major production companies. But the fortunate thing that uh, Tyler Perry bought a former, you know, uh, Confederate uh, Army base in Atlanta, you know, right? You know, right, too, right, not right, too right. far from the Green Bryant Mall. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, been down in the brother, you know, but I want to tell people, you know, is that. They need to look at it from a different perspective. We need to look at it from a perspective of ownership, autonomy, and independence. Anytime, you know, a black man can make a major acquisition of that magnitude, we all should rejoice in it. Because what they're saying, and they're saying, they're saying that the chain on our brains have been loosened. You know what I'm saying? That we're no longer thinking like a slave. Because if he have his own business, and he have his own entity, then what he can do now, he can now produce his own films directly from his studio. He don't have to go to Hollywood. He don't have to beg nobody for any assistance. He don't have to ask nobody, can he do this or can he do it? He just do what he want to do as he please. And I think that that should be the level that we all aspire to as African-American men and women. We should all aspire to be independent. We should all aspire to own our own business because I think that that is one of the ills and the problems of the African-American community. There's not enough black-owned businesses in the African-American community. All my businesses in the African-American community, I refuse not to own a business in the African-American community. And I think that every African-American should have a business in their own community because that way your children who are going to grow up in that community, who are going to walk past these stores, they will see images and likeness of themselves, and that would inspire them to want to go on and to be successful in business and have their own entity too because, you know, if, in order for us to change the narrative, Brother Reed, first of all, we got to change the perception. You know, what, what Barack Obama did for the perception of politics and the perception of the presidency, he gave the perception that an African-American man can become president of the United States. Tyler Perry is showing us that an African-American man can own a major studio in this country. We can produce our own films. I've seen a lot of people got on about that new movie that he put out called Mercy or whatever. You know what I mean? And, and I tell people, because they shot it in five days, they say, well, they can see wigs, you know, uh, change, and they can see, you know, different scenes that, you know, people doing different things. And what I try to tell people is this. Why would you look at the negativity all the positivity that came out, the fact that it's on Netflix, the fact that, you know, it's almost all African-American cast, you know, the fact that it is directed, it is produced and manufactured by an African-American company, that should be the positivity, not, you know, y'all don't sit, they don't sit down and go to uh, uh, AMC and look at the European movies and figure out all the wrongs that's wrong with those movies, you know, but when the African American do something, you know, and they try to make it a big problem. And that's, that's to me, that is one of the ills of our community. We have to stop down on ourselves and start crowning ourselves.
To my book, The Art of Human Chess, is a best-seller, New York best time seller. This book here sold millions, so all over the world, all throughout the prison system. This is the book, The 48 Laws of Game, Pet Biology. Make sure you get these books. If you can't, if you don't want to buy the hardcover, if you don't want to buy the paperback, then the best thing to do is go to iTunes on your cell phone and type in my name, Pippin Ken, and I guarantee you the book will pop up. They don't work. Go to audiobook.com, type in my name. They don't work. Go to Amazon.com, type in my name. Anywhere books are sold all over the country, you can get my books. These are my best selling books. You hear people talk about them all the time on Instagram, on Snapchat. These are definitely some good reads. Please get my book. And I guarantee you that you will never be the same. Your life will be impacted and also your life will be enhanced just by getting these two books The Art of Human Chess and The 48 Laws of Game. Just like The 48 Laws of Power, just like The Art of War. Four, Four seven. seven.